What is up everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is David Gamble and in this video I'll be showing you how you can get started in real estate with no money or no credit. Listen, I know that may sound impossible, but these four options that I'm going to give you can definitely be life changing. I actually use some of these options myself. So if you stick with me to the end of this video, I guarantee you won't regret it. All right, check this out. If you're looking to make five, 10, 15, 20,000 in the next 30, 60 to 90 days, listen, this video is for you. So just stick with me. Also, if you're looking to generate passive income over the next 12 plus months, this video is also for you as well too, because the four options that I'm going to be presenting to you will definitely help with generating the passive income or generating the 5, 10, 15, 20K months for you. Now, I'm going to tell you now, if you don't have any hustle, if you can't get up early in the mornings, if you can't dedicate the time daily to invest in learning, to invest in just bettering yourself and learning more about the strategies that I'm teaching you, then I'm going to tell you, you might as well leave out of this video now. But if you're willing to put in the work, just stick with me. And just to let you know, this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. Like I said, I use these strategies, some of these strategies, and it's definitely at work in my favor, but it also came with educating myself, putting myself around the right people that is willing to teach, that's willing to give me some input on the strategies that I'm attempting. So it all depends on that as well too. So let's get into it. All right, so this first scenario is one of my favorites. And the reason why is because, listen, you can go two different ways with this strategy. You can potentially make five, 10, 15, 20,000 in one month from this strategy, or you can create passive income for yourself for as long as you want from this strategy, from a property that you put 0% down on, or you or didn't use any of your credit. This strategy is seller financing. So in a nutshell, if you never heard of seller financing, it's when the seller owns a property free and clear, which means they have 100% equity and they don't have any mortgages on the property at all. So they can become the bank for you. So if they become the bank for you, that eliminates two issues. You don't have to get a bank loan or you don't have to run your credit to even get the loan at all. So in this scenario, you can either flip this property to an investor or you can hold it for yourself and create passive income. Now, I hope I explained that well to you. If not, just leave a comment down below and I'll explain it in the comments as well if that, if that is needed. But, you know, with that being said, you can take this property over. If it needs any repairs or anything, you can go in, fix it up, put a tenant in place, boom, you got passive income if the numbers make sense for you, right? You gotta evaluate it and make sure that it is actually a deal. Now, another scenario is, just say you put, you have 0% down with the seller and you find another investor or a homeowner that may wanna move into the property and fix it up their self. You can get 10,000 down from that potential buyer that you have in place. And guess what? If you put 0% down and you have 10% and you get 10% from your buyer, that's creating $10,000 out of thin air. That's why this is one of my favorite strategies because it's just creating money out of thin air for you in both scenarios. So now, you know with anything, you're gonna have upsides or you're gonna have downsides. The upsides, which I already said, you don't need a bank loan. You don't have to go to the bank and try to get them to give you a loan because you know a lot of banks give you a hard time about getting a loan, especially if you don't have any credit. The second upside is you can agree to whatever terms that you and the seller agree on. So let me break that down to you. Let's say that you and the seller agree that, um, that you're gonna make monthly payments on this property every single month for the next seven years. And at the end of the seven year term, you will have a balloon payment, which means that you pay off the full amount at the end of the seven years. Listen, that is a great option. Some sellers even tell you that, hey, if you pay me such and such every month 
and you make these payments over the next 10 years, I'm fine with that. They could say 15 years or 20 years. You can have a 30 year term with a seller if that's what they will accept. You just have to weigh out your options whenever you create your terms and see what best fits the seller. Another part of the term agreement that is gonna play a major factor is the amount of interest. You can create whatever amount of interest that the seller agree with. It can be 0% interest, it can be 3%, 15%, 10%. It just depends on what you and the seller agree to. Now, like I said, it's gonna be downsides to every strategy that I'm gonna mention. So the downsides to seller financing is, if you don't make the payments every single month to the seller, the seller has the right to foreclose on you and get the property back. So that means if you go in and you put in new flooring, a new HVAC system, um, you put on a new roof, and you move a tenant in and you start collecting cash flow from the tenant, but, but then the tenant stop paying every single month, guess who's gonna have to pay the payment? You. And if you don't make that payment every single month, then the seller gets to take the property back just by foreclosing on you. No matter how much money you put into it, you can put 100,000 into it. If the payments are not being paid, they can take it back and they have every right to. So make sure whenever you are presenting the strategy to a seller, make sure the terms make sense, make sure that it's actually a deal. Because if not, you can be putting yourself in a situation where you can be foreclosed on. Another downside to it, which I already said before, is the amount of interest that you could potentially pay a seller. With a seller actually accepting 0% down, they can ask for a high amount of interest, eight, nine, 10%, where if you do go out and get a loan, you know, you could potentially get a 3% loan, you can potentially get a lower interest rate, but that is just the perks of working directly with the seller and allowing the seller to be the bank. So it's really not even a downside, but it's something that you have to take into consideration whenever you are picking up a property through the seller finance strategy. All right, so option number two. I'm hit, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if this information is good. Hit, hit this, hit it, just hit it and this will go away and we can move on to option two. All right, all right, I'm sorry for that. But I just had to get you guys' attention just in case you was dozing off. But yeah, just hit the, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, let's get back into it. Option number two, home equity loan. Now, home equity loan, a home equity loan doesn't really fit my scenario, but if it was ever a situation that I could possibly do that, I definitely would. But, you know, I've done research on it, and I know it's a great option if you use it properly. So just to give you a definition of what a home equity loan is, it's just the difference between what your home is worth and how much you owe on the property. So for example, if you have a property that is worth $200,000, your mortgage amount is $100,000. If that's the amount that you have left, you have an equity amount of $100,000. So just using rough numbers just to keep everything simple. Just say you are able to pull that $100,000 out. You have a loan that's secured by the equity in your property. And also with every strategy, you know that there's gonna be upsides and there's gonna be downsides. So the upsides to a home equity loan is you'll be able to create cash out of thin air. So let's say you find a property that you want to fix up and flip. You didn't have the cash to do it. You didn't have anybody else that would be willing to invest with you. Let's say you go pull out a home equity loan on your property to purchase the property and complete the renovations. Once you do all those renovations and you put the property on the market and sell it, you're looking to make a profit every time you do it. Let's say you make a profit of 40, 30 to 40,000 after it's sold. You did that from creating money out of thin air. That is a perfect scenario, but it can definitely happen. If you run the numbers correctly and you make sure that it was a great investment, it can definitely happen. Now, 
Another upside is you'll be able to use a loan to purchase another property. That fall in the other scenario that we discussed, creating passive income, you know, anywhere from now to the next 12 plus months. You can use the equity to purchase another property, go in, fix it up a little bit, put a tenant in place, boom, you're creating cash flow. That's going to pay that amount that you took out back to the bank from your primary residence or wherever you're pulling that money from. So, you know, that's another great upside. Now, like I said before, you if you have upsides, you're going to have downsides too. So the downsides to a home equity loan is if you don't make those payments, the bank can close on the primary residence that you pull a loan out from, or if you had an investment property that you pull a loan from, they can foreclose on that property. Wherever you pull a loan from, they can foreclose on the property. So that is what I mean when I said the loan is secured by the equity in your home. So basically, they can foreclose on you. So make sure you know what you're doing whenever you're pulling out a loan to purchase another investment property or to fix an investment property. Another downside is you will decrease the cash flow that you're making every single month. And the reason why I say that is if you are already receiving a certain amount of cash flow from an investment property that you know that you pull a loan from, of course your monthly payment is going to increase if you take out a certain amount of equity. So your cash flow is going to decrease for that moment. So that's a, a, a minimum downside, but if the numbers make sense, it can actually work out for you. So just keep that in mind. The last downside that I want you to that I want to bring to the table is an adjustable rate mortgage. If you take out a home equity loan and it's um, an adjustable rate type loan, the downside to that is if the rate increases, that's going to bring down your cash flow. So keep that in mind whenever you're pulling out a loan and it's an adjustable rate because the rates can change. So as long as you keep that in mind and you give yourself the wiggle room to where it may adjust, then you should be fine. All right, so let's get into this third option. This third option, which is a great option, if you take the time to educate yourself on it and make sure that you know that, that you're not putting anybody in a tough situation where they could potentially lose money, this can definitely be a great option. The third option is partnerships. Partnerships is pretty much where, just say you ran into a deal that's a great deal out in your area and you don't have the money or credit to actually pick the property up. A partnership, it can actually create more money out of thin air for you. Let me give you an example of partnerships. You can have a private lender, which is someone that is known for lending out money to someone that's trying to pick up a real estate deal. Or you can have a family member that has a 401k and they may not be satisfied with the results they're getting in the 401k and they're willing to invest with you. Now that particular scenario is one that you need to make sure that you really understand what you're doing because you're really putting someone's money at risk if you're bringing a bad deal to the table. With a private lender, they're pretty much more savvy when it comes down to lending money. They're gonna evaluate the deal and see if it makes sense themselves. But for a family member, you need to make sure you know what you're doing and you have some skin in the game before you use that as an option. Now, with both of these scenarios, the number one most important thing for the partner is that they are getting a return on their money. Not just any old return, it's a return that is actually worth it, a return that they wouldn't get in their 401kr, a return that a private lender wouldn't get in a bank. So it just has to make sense for them. Now, as for the other two options, we know that we had upsides and downsides. So this particular option, you're gonna have upsides and downsides as well. So one of the upsides to partnerships is you ran into a great deal that you don't have any money or you don't have the credit for to actually pick this property up. The private lender is gonna bring the money to the table. As long as they make 8, 10, 12, 13% return on their money, they are okay with it. They're gonna lend to you. And if 
you are able to perform, they're going to be willing to lend to you, like I stated before, over and over and over again. Or let's say that family, and let's say that you don't even need them to pull from their 401k, or if they don't have a 401k in place, but they have excellent credit. You can use that family member to go and get a loan. You can get that family member to go and get a loan because they're going to qualify for one if they have the income and the credit. And then you can use that money to invest in that property that is a great deal and they get a return on the money that they borrow for you. So it's a win-win situation for you and your family member or you and the private lender that you have in place. That is the upside to a partnership. You're creating that money out of thin air or you're creating that credit that you need to qualify for a loan out of thin air. So you see, that is the upside. So now, you know we're gonna have downsides as well too. So one of the downsides to partnerships is they may have a say-so on the deal or what you're investing in or what you purchased to fix the property up if you didn't have it in writing saying that you have full control they just providing the funds to get the deal done. So that can definitely be a downside if, if you and your partner are not seeing eye to eye. Another downside, which I don't really see as a downside, but it can potentially be one, is smaller profits. If you and your partner agree to split 50-50, of course you're not getting 100%. So if, if you were gonna make 50,000, you and your partner will have to split that 50-50 so you'll get 25 and your partner get 25. Now, that's not a bad, that's not bad at all, but for some people that may be a downside. Now, this particular downside that I'm getting ready to tell you can definitely be a deal breaker because if it's delayed decision making, that is gonna potentially cost you money every single day the longer it takes for you to fix your property or the longer it takes for you to get the property in the condition to where you can actually rent the property out. So delayed decision making can cause major issues if you and your partner are not on the same page or your partner is procrastinators. That's something else you wanna keep in mind as a downside. The worst downside is possibly putting your friendship at risk when it comes down to a family member. Sometimes things happen to where it may not work out. So if it doesn't work out and so much money is tied up in it, that could potentially cause issues with a friendship. You know, private lenders, that may be a little bit different because that's more of a business transaction with someone that you built a relationship with, maybe at a networking event or something like that. But a family member, of course, there's trust there. There's some type of loyalty there and you don't want to ruin it. That's why I say you got to make sure that you verify that this is a great deal. So you definitely will want to keep that in mind as one of the top downsides to a partnership. All right, let's get into this last option. I'm excited about this last option because this is the option that got me started in real estate when I had zero dollars in my pocket or when I was just making it day by day. The last option that I want to present to you, which is the top option for someone with zero dollars or they don't have any credit is wholesaling. Now, I'm gonna tell you, wholesaling is something that you have to spend time learning how to do. You gotta be willing to hustle. And if you don't have any money, you definitely gotta be willing to put in a lot of time in order to generate cash out of thin air using this strategy. Now, if you do have a little bit of money to spare, you, you can actually put in less hustle and put more money towards it to generate more deals but it's an excellent strategy. Now, wholesaling is pretty much this. Let me break it down to you. So let's say you have a property that you know can sell at $200,000, right? Um, you reached out to the seller to see if they wanted to sell a property and the seller says, hey, I've been trying to get rid of this property. I didn't really know who to reach out to. Um, I can't put it on the market because it's not in great condition. Uh, I'm willing to sell up $150,000 for this property. You know the property can sell for one ninety-five dollars to $200,000. So you put the property under contract with the seller, which is an equitable interest contract, and you start marketing the property to end buyers. So your end buyer is going to be, they're going to know what it's worth as well too. They're going to do their research and they're going to know what it's worth as well too 
and they say, okay, I'll give you 195 for the property. You see that? You creating cash out of thin air. You got the property at 150,000. The buyer is willing to pay 195 for it. You just created a $25,000 assignment fee from just putting a property on the contract that a seller say that they want to sell and you found an end buyer that's willing to pay you 195 and you made $25,000. That's a large chunk of change to say you didn't have anything in your pocket, let's say 30 days ago when you put the property on the contract. So then you can take that money to reinvest back into the business and you can turn that from a side hustle to an actual business. So that's pretty much what wholesaling is. And like I said, that's how I got started. That's how I got my first deal a little over a year and a half ago. I really recommend that strategy to you because you can definitely get started with no money, no credit, no partnerships, no home equity loan. It's just all hustle if you don't have cash or credit to get started with. Even though this is one of my favorite strategies, you do have upsides and you still have your downsides. Upsides, your number one upsides is always you're creating cash out of thin air. Another upside to, to wholesaling is that you can turn it into a business that generates income every single month. You can generate five, 10, 15, 20, 30,000 every single month from wholesaling because you're taking the money that you made and reinvest it back in. You don't no longer have zero dollars in your pocket. So when you put more money in, you can cut back on the hustle, the hustling side of a little bit and start generating more leads because you're putting money into it. But that's a great upside to it. The third upside is it helps you learn your real estate market. You, for If you start getting multiple deals in a certain area, you know whenever a seller tells you that they want this amount for a property, you gonna know based off of the condition if this is a deal or not, and you don't have to waste your time. You can just throw them into a follow-up and when the numbers make sense for you, then you can put the property in the contract. And the last upside is you could potentially quit your nine to five and do this business full time. That should be the number one goal. That should get you motivated because that, that's creating financial freedom for you. And that should definitely keep you going when times get hard with this business because times will get hard in this wholesaling business. Now, let's get into the downsides. Some of the downsides, well, one of the downsides is you can potentially go months without getting a deal. You can potentially go years without getting deals, depending on the amount of hustle that you're putting in, the amount of consistency that you're putting in. Now, the first two years that I attempted to do this business, I was very inconsistent. I wasn't putting in the work how I needed to. And for two years, I didn't get a deal. That's just the honest truth. I can be completely honest with you. But I blame that on myself because I was inconsistent. And I wasn't putting in the work that I needed to. So please make sure that you, you're willing to put in the time and the hustle to get this stuff done. Because if not, you can go two years without getting a deal too. Another downside, deals fall through. I've had numerous deals fall through. I had properties on the contract. I probably had it under contract a little bit too high or the seller wanted to back out last minute. And you know, you, if you under contract, you really don't have to, um, you know, let the seller just walk away from, you know, your contract. But in most situations, I just say, you know what, I don't want to go through the hassle of that. You can keep your property. There's more properties out here for me to go after. Um, issues with the title company. You can have issues where you don't have a clean title whenever you getting ready to go to the closing table and that will cause a deal to fall through. So these are just all scenarios that you have to keep in mind whenever you're dealing with a property that you're potentially wholesaling. Third, but not least, there are shady people in this business. Everybody in this business does not have integrity, so definitely keep that in mind. So those are the four options that you have in this business. And if you enjoy this video, definitely like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell. And I definitely be putting out more content. So hit the like button. See you next time.